everyone. Um, so, bless you be. I wanted to talk to you today about um, how to set up an altar. Now, obviously, depending on what sort of tradition you follow, um, you might do it certain ways. So, for instance, it, so I'm looking at my notes for this one because obviously I'm not Wiccan. Um, so, obviously, if you are a Wiccan practitioner, you would set up the, your altar with certain items if you want to. So, quite common items that are on a Wiccan altar are um, there's an area for the god and the goddess, and you might have like a bowl or a chalice to represent the goddess, and on the left. Then on the right hand side, you might have something like um, like phallic symbols like an athame or a wand to represent the divine masculine. Um, and then you might have some sort of god statue and candles. Um, and in the centre of the altar, you might keep the main symbols of the Wiccan religion, like um, a pentacle. Um, some people um, place their altar depending on the position of the um, directions, like north, south, east and west. Um, so in the north it's like represents earth, um, the east is air, the south is fire and the west is water. So, and there's obviously lots of different ways you can represent these elements. Uh, for example, you can represent the element of fire with a candle, you can represent the element of air with incense, you can represent earth with some sand or salt and you could represent uh, water with a bowl of water um, and obviously some people will place their altars in specific directions um, and common items that a Wiccan altar would have would be an athame, I may be pronouncing that wrong I do apologise, which is basically like a, a ceremonial dagger, uh, a broom, candles, cauldron, some sort of chalice. The cauldron and the chalice obviously represent the divine feminine incense pentacle and the wand um and where did i write it um, and you might have like a temporary altar set up where you pack everything away at the end or you may have a permanent setup where it's left out all the time depending on whether you're um able to express your um religious views or not some people are what we call in the broom in the broom closet so that they can't sort of make it widely known that they're pagan or anything. So they might do one that in a box. It could be in a shoe box or something, and then you just get the things out when you need. Um, you may have one on permanent display. It depends because there are ways of having an altar without it looking like an altar as well. Um, but if like me, you're sort of more pagan side of things like eclectic pagan uh, and not so much towards wicca then really you can please yourself so i tend to do my altars quite intuitively so with what i feel feels right at the time um quite commonly like i've got my guy altar just in front of me and that has um yeah i'll turn you around so you can have a look so sorry for the odd camera angle um but my tripod's not cooperating today so this is my guy altar which is left set up and the elements i've got on here i've got um incense because i like the smell creates a nice atmosphere and also represents air then i've got um the big rock in the background which i found on a beach and it's got like lots of little fossilized shells in it i don't know what it is it's just a lump of rock i found on the beach and um, that represents like earth then i've got um, my little dish which is like my offering plate um which i've got a few items on like i've got my some crystals on there i've also got my candle which i can light um to represent the goddess um and then I've got like some lights around it. I've got my Gaia statue and the floral elements around that I've made a platform of for her. Then on the left hand side, I've got like my little mini maypole 
um, because obviously it was made there not so long back. And then I've also got my book of shadows, which I'm writing down all the information about the um, Celtic pagan deities that I'm learning about, that I'm doing a series on. Um, because I'm looking more in, obviously, because I'm from the UK, I'm looking more into sort of mythology and deities from the UK. Um, so, obviously, I'm starting off with the Celtic pagan deities, and then I'm going to look at other mythology for the UK, and I'm learning more about that. Um, and I've got crystals on there, and wood, like natural elements. Um, and then obviously if I wanted, if I wanted to like represent water on here, which I haven't, um, I could just put a little dish or a little cup with some water on if I wanted, but I don't tend to sort of make sure I've got every element. I just tend to go with what feels right. So I always like to have on an altar space, um, something to represent the deity, um, a candle, incense, some sort of offering plate and some crystals that tends to be my main elements that I put on and I'll adapt it um, and it depends whether it's like a working altar or a deity altar so like this one's more geared towards a deity um, then I've got over the other side of the room is more my sort of working one where I've got things on there that I use like um, my incense, my singing bowl, that sort of thing. I'll uh, just my show My main you. one is there. Um, that tends to have a, there's like a little card holder there and I tend to put a card on there to represent um, Goddess Selene, the moon goddess. Um, but I haven't put one on yet. I tend to change it with the moon phases. Then I've got my stag representing like forest spirits, uh, more sort of Kanunos side of things. Um, and I've got like candles, my singing bowl, um, and I've got a little box with different jewelry and stuff in, different crystals and things on there. And then I've got my little, my little Nemesis Nair cat figures on there because they're cute. Um, like that would be where I would sit while I'm writing in my um, book of shadows, or if I'm doing a particular like ritual or anything, which I don't do loads of, um, but I, it would be over there that's my main table so that's more like my working altar setup um so you can set it up pretty much however you want excuse my hair i've been out in the rain so it's gonna go frizzy um but i would say have something to represent your chosen deity have a candle um maybe have some incense if you can i can't always burn incense I've got the incense stick on well, but sometimes I'll only put it on for about a minute and then turn it up, like, you know, douse it. Um, I'd say have, um, for me personally, what I always like to have is like candles, some representation of the deity, um, some crystals, um, and a nice cloth to cover the table that it's on. Um, and just do, do it how it feels to you. Like, I've had previous altar setups where... I had one, I remember, and it was just all candles. There were so many candles. I think it was caught, sort of getting towards Yule. Um, and I know I've had, I have changed my altar with certain sabbats and stuff. So, like, I'll have an, ab, uh, an altar for Maybon, I'll have one for Lanasa, I'll have one for Yule, I'll have one for Samhain and Ostara and all that sort of thing so I like to change mine seasonally sort of like with the wheel of the year um because I do f I do follow the Wiccan wheel of the year even though I'm not Wiccan I'm kind of like so I, that's why I said I'm like eclectic pagan because I'll have bits from different things I mean it's like my chosen deities like the deities I feel a connection to Gaia and Celine now, Celine is from the Roman pagan pantheon. Um, she's the goddess of the moon. There's also um, the god Helios from the Roman pa pantheon. Although I tend to think, I always think of Sol first. So I need to look more into that, in that deity. Um, so I've got like a mixture of different places that I get things from. I also set up an altar for the goddess Bridget now and again um, around the time 
um, when she's more sort of thought of. Um, which one is it? I, I can't, I've got no memory today. Uh, Bridges. Imbolg. Goodness me. My brain just forgot the word imbolg. Um, so like round imbolg, I'll set up a, um, altar for the goddess Bridget. Um, so yeah, just do what you feel right. There's no particular rules or anything. I mean, even if you follow the Wiccan tradition, if you want to put up different things or not have certain things, that's fine. I mean, I used to follow more the Wiccan side of things when I first started, because obviously a lot of the books that you find are Wicker based. Um, and it takes a bit more digging to find the other stuff. Um, that's like more towards the paganism side as opposed to just Wicca. Um, because obviously a lot of modern books are very Wicca focused because that's like the dominant pagan religion, um, especially in the UK. So, um, yeah, so obviously, like with me, I mean, I used to follow that. So I'd have like a representation for the god and goddess and everything. But I've never had an athame or a th is it an athame or a theme? I can never pronounce that word. I keep forgetting it. I think it's athame. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I've never had that because I don't feel comfortable with weapons or anything like that. I know it's not a weapon, it's a ceremonial knife or dagger, but that's not me. I no, it makes me feel uncomfortable so I don't have anything like that. Um so yeah, I think basically the main point of my video is um put on your altar what you want. It's up to you. Um I like to do um, card readings now and again, like from my um, Halloween Oracle or my Moon Oracle, and I will put them on the altars if I've done a reading. Like if I'll do a reading that will be for like the week or something, or the month, and I'll put the card on my altar space as well. Or with certain cards, I might use them to represent the deity. So like I've got a Celtic... Oh, it's over, it's over there on my shelf. I've got like a deck of um, oracle cards which are for the Celtic pagan deities. So like when it's in bulk, I'll get the goddess Bridget card out and I'll put that on the altar. So it's like representing Bridget. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I could think of to tell you about how to set up an altar. I would say have it somewhere where, like if you can have one out on display permanently, have it somewhere where your kids aren't going to mess with it. Have it somewhere where, like, your cat's not going to mess with it if you've got a cat. Um, or, you know, if you've got a cat, just either train them not to go on it or just be prepared to keep putting stuff back on when they knock it off because that's what cats do. Um, obviously, I've got snails, so I haven't got to worry about that. They stay in their enclosure, and I've got a goldfish, so and there's no one to interfere with my setups. If you've got small children, just make just be aware of what you've got on there, especially if they can reach it, um, because obviously you don't want them to get hurt. I would recommend if you having certain items like an athame or certain crystals, I would have them um, put away after you've used them, just because like some small cr like crystals can be quite small, um, and obviously they're a choking hazard, and then obviously an athame can they could cut their finger on it. Um, obviously always um, use fire safety when you're using a candle or incense make sure you never leave, the, leave it unattended while it's burning um, make sure you've properly put it out um, before you go to bed so what I tend to do is if I burn a candle um, I don't burn it for too long because I've got asthma so I can't have things burning for too long but I might have my candle burning for a little bit and I just make sure it's completely out and cold before I go to bed. And then with the incense, if I'm not sure, I'll dip the end of the incense in some water just to make sure it's properly out. Because um, obviously I tend to use only a little bit because I can only have it on for brief periods and then I'll put it out. Um, and it will dry off by the morning and you can relight it. Um, it's not a big problem. Um, so yeah, don't leave stuff unattended. And also, if you have, um, here's a big one as well. If you have a crystal ball, which mine is there, don't leave it in direct sunlight. Um, what I would recommend, if you've got it on a table where sunlight is going to catch it, put a cloth over it. This is nothing to do with um, 
spirits or anything looking through it it's literally if the sun hits your um crystal ball funny it'll burn your house down um because it works like a magnifying glass and it will focus the sun a beam like the beam of sunlight that hits it into a small spot and it's very very good at making things catch fire so have it out of place um out of the way of the sun or cupboard mine is in my bookcase pushed back so the sun doesn't touch it at all um i've tested it uh where is it oh it's in just there and i've got it far enough back that the sun doesn't directly hit it um that's a very important safety thing um because obviously you don't want to cause a fire um other than that um, i think that's it so yeah hope you enjoyed this video blessed be and uh, bye for now